What's up guys, this is Joe Mattel. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the brand new Mica RB42. I've been doing this audio thing for a while. Even when I couldn't afford it, it was still really fun to me. In a way, having budget audio gear makes it more fun because you have to actually try a lot to make that stuff sound good. It kind of reminds me of cars. So when I first started off, I didn't have a very good car, but I put a lot into it. I put a lot into the stereo and you know, I really had a sense of pride because I had to make it a certain way. Now, recently I got my dream car, the F80 M3, and it's great, but it just came like that. You know, I, I really couldn't take credit for how well it performed because it just came like that, right? And that's kind of how I feel about higher end audio stuff. When you buy a bunch of expensive stuff, yeah, it's going to sound good. It should sound good because it's expensive, right? But if you get some audio equipment that is not the top of the line and you have to figure out how to place it in a certain way, then that kind of is part of the fun. And to get it to sound good, it's going to take some effort from you guys. And that's where Micah comes in. Previously, I've made a video talking about how Micah is the budget audiophile's best friend. And it's because they make really good stuff at very affordable prices. They're best known for their Micah MB42X. And that's a great speaker. A lot of good reviews on that. I actually have two pairs. Actually, three. I have the powered PV42Xs. They also came out with a speaker called the Micah Club 3, which I really liked. It was a smaller speaker than the MB42X. And it had a 3.5 inch woofer that was crazy. Like the amount of bass that this 3.5 inch woofer uh, could produce was really hilarious, actually. But there were some downsides, which were that the cabinet design wasn't that great, so it had some resonances. The crossover for the tweeter wasn't that great, so it just wasn't the smoothest crossover that I've ever heard, Not especially not compared to their MB42X, which had a way more advanced crossover than what was on the Club 3. And that's where I think that these RB42s come in, is these are way more refined than the Club 3s, they have the same refinement, even a little bit more than the MB42Xs, but it retains some of that crazy bass from the Club 3s. Some of the obvious things that you'll notice, this is using a 4-inch woofer. This woofer looks very similar to the one in the Dayton MK442s. I don't know if it's the same, but it sure looks the same to me. Let me know. Do you think that this is the same driver or not? Maybe it just looks similar? I don't know. You guys tell me. And then we move over to the tweeter and this is a three quarter inch tweeter. And this looks similar to what they use in the MB42X. I had no issues with that tweeter, so that's fine. Nothing crazy when you look at the back of it, no huge magnet, nothing really to talk about, but it was a good tweeter. One thing that I'll tell you right now is this is way heavier than you'd expect it to be for a speaker this size. And it's because they're using three quarters of an inch MDF. And that's something that they definitely did not need to do. Most of the time people will use maybe a half inch, maybe even thinner than that, especially for inexpensive speakers. But this is using three and a quarter, and that's what I might use if I'm building a subwoofer for a car. That's the typical thickness that you'd make. And the reason you do that is because there's less resonance. It's like it's like hitting a bowling ball. Look at this. Ow. Uh, it has rounded corners, so that looks pretty cool. And uh, yeah, overall, they had the truncated look here. And they have a few design elements. Now on the back, you'll notice the port and you'll find five-way binding posts here. Very nice. Overall, nothing to complain about. The veneer, you know, obviously it's not real wood, but um, everything looks good. It's The finish is nice. I don't see any parts that are peeling, nothing that shows that it's not good quality. Now these are coming in more expensive than the MB42s. I think they're shooting for around 149 and what they told me was that they do have a special introductory offer right now. So uh, check on the link below and see what the prices are. So one of the things that they really wanna show off is the crossover on this, and it's a 10 element crossover, and it's using an 18 decibel slope. So basically the steeper the slope on a crossover, what that means is that the tweeter is getting less of the low frequencies and the woofer is getting less of the high frequencies. So steeper means that there's less crosstalk, let's just say. Typically higher slope means more components, which means more expensive. And so a lot of times the inexpensive stuff, you'll see maybe a six decibel slope, not even a 12 decibel slope most of the time, but they went for an 18 decibel slope. Good on them, 
they're trying to spend on the internals, the stuff that you might not even see, but it's stuff that you might be able to hear. I did some frequency response tests of these. Some things to note, it hits pretty low for a speaker of this size. Now, I think just by looking at these, I can tell you right now that these are meant for a desk more than for a living room situation. They're just a little bit too small for a living room. Even though they have a lot of base, they probably are not gonna fill a big room. This is not a very big space that I'm in right here. You know, I think it might be okay for a space like this, but if you have a larger space, then you may wanna go with bigger speakers. But on a desk, I think that most people would be very happy with the bass response on these. I was kind of expecting the bass response to be pretty good, just based on the cabinet design, the fact that it's pretty, it's a pretty long box considering the size of the woofer. And that's so they can have more internal space, more base, lower base. If you look at the surround on the woofer, it's also something where I would expect it to have a significant amount of base. Now, what really surprised me is how well that crossover actually worked. Taking a look at my frequency response measurements, look at how flat this thing is. I would say this is the flattest speaker that I've reviewed thus far. And that is a surprise to me. Good job, Micah. What most people are going to want to know is whether these are worth it over something like the MB42Xs. And what I would say is if you're using a sub at your desk, then, you know, you can save yourself some money and just go with the MB42Xs, which are more efficient. These are very inefficient. They're four ohm speakers and the sensitivity on these is 83 decibels, which is really, really, really low. And the reason that is, is because they wanted to hit very low for the size. They wanted to keep the box small and what you sacrifice is sensitivity. In my experience, I've tried an app that was 50 watts per channel, Micah's own AD250, and it played it to a decent volume. I found that I could play it even louder when I connected it to the SVS Prime Wireless sound base. So that has significantly more power and these were able to handle it. Now, I couldn't crank it up to the max because these are maxed out at 100 watts and so I didn't want to push it beyond that but it was able to handle it pretty well. It liked the extra power for sure. So keep that in mind. The MB42Xs are more efficient, so you wouldn't have to use an amplifier that is as powerful. With these, you're gonna kind of want to spend a little bit more on an amplifier. I would say minimum the SMSL AD18 that I previously reviewed, that's 80 watts per channel. I would say that's probably the minimum that I would want to use with these. So yeah, if you're using a sub at your desk, go ahead and save yourself some money try the MB42Xs. If you plan on not using a sub, then I would say that these are a better option. If you're trying to set up a budget home theater, I would also go with the MB42s because again, you're gonna be using a sub. As of right now, the MB42s have a matching center. I think I heard that they're gonna be coming out with a, a matching center channel soon, but again, you're gonna need an amplifier that's gonna be able to run all that, meaning that it needs to handle four ohms and it's gonna need to have enough wattage to be able to pump enough sound out of these things. If you're gonna be using a crossover anyway, that means you're not gonna be utilizing all the bass that this tiny speaker has. It's kind of, in a way, wasting some of the best parts of this speaker. Also, if you're gonna be running an AVR, it's gonna flatten out the response anyway, so even if the MB42s are not as flat, maybe the room EQ is gonna help to flatten that out anyway. Ideally, my recommendation is that these are gonna be best at a desk. Now, I tested these out at my shop, which is a much larger space, and what I found was that it was loud enough to fill the space, but I wanted a little bit more out of it. And that's what you'd expect, still a small speaker. Overall, I was impressed with the imaging, the soundstage, they're solid. Overall, I think for the price point, mm, I'm not sure that there's anything else within the category. Micah really did a good job of doing the research and figuring out what price they should be at. And so there's nothing really in this price range, 150 and below, that's gonna compete with this. You can spend 50 bucks more and maybe go for stuff like the AI40s, which are powered. You might be able to go with something a little bit less expensive in the Pioneer SPBS22 LRs, but those are much bigger and they don't have as much bass as these and they're not as flat either. They're really in a category of their own. So just know that if you're gonna use these, probably gonna be best at a desk. Make sure you have them on stands. Make sure you're using an app that can power these. That's basically it. These do have a magnetic speaker grill, which I like. I've tested it with a speaker grill on and off, and I didn't see too much of a, a difference. I think you can keep them on if you wanted to. So as usual, we have to go to the speaker leaderboard and see where these place. All right, so here we are at the speaker leaderboard, and we have the Mica RB42s. So for best bookshelf, let's see, where could we put these? Best bookshelf, I'm gonna have to put them. It's going to be around here. So we have the Pioneer 
SP BS22s. We have the Yamo S803s and the Fluence AI60s. So, best bookshelf. That's tough. It could easily go anywhere in here. Um, I would like to say that because of some of the quality control issues that I experienced with the S803s, that I would prefer the RB42s. Um, if you get some perfect S803s, you know, I could easily say that those would be better in a living room situation because they can play louder without distortion if you get a good one. Um, so I could put it this way also. I do think that the RB42s are superior to the Pioneer BS22 LRs, uh, but they are currently more expensive than these, which sometimes go on sale for about 99 bucks. Uh, they have deeper bass than the Pioneers, and it's a flatter response. Although some people might still find these more pleasing, depending on whether you, you like rolled off highs or not, because the Pioneers have rolled off highs. Um, the Yamo S803 is a more of a V-shaped response. So it's going to really depend on what you like. Um, because I had issues with my S803s and I've read other people have also had issues. I'm going to put the Mica RB42 above that. Now let's see, best for desktop. For desktop, what do we have here? We have on top the Dynas, Fluence AI 60s, the Vanitu T0s, the Canto U6, U4, and the Dayton Audio, and then the Mica MB42s. So these are going to be above the MB42s. They're also going to be above the Dayton Audio MK402s. And uh, these seem to be using the same driver, but this has much more complex crossover network, much smoother clearer just just overall nicer highs and the mica rb42 actually has more bass than the canto u4 it actually has more bass than the u6 it has more bass than the than these vanitus um it doesn't have more bass than the fluence ai 60s so i can't put them above those the vanitus just because the vanitus just have a crazy feature set and a very clean response just very, very well thought out speaker. So they're excellent at a desk and they're also small. The Canto U6s and the U4s, they they have a very nice finish and they have a built-in amplifier. And so they win because of that. If I were to add an amplifier to the RB42, of course, the price is going to go up. But if I were to do that and put them at a desk, then I could easily say that I can put them above the U6 and the U4 just purely based on they're a low frequency extension. So these come in right now at 129. So they're going to be competing in the under $200 category. If they were able to get it under $100, they would take the top spot above the pioneers. The best overall, regardless of price. So 85th, got the U, okay, Dinah's, Wharfdale's, trying to find out where they're going to fit. And Let's see here. Okay, so RB42 is going to be above the S803. Uh, again, if you can get a good pair of S803s, they're going to be better in the living room situation. And um, I'm not sure. I don't think that they have deeper bass, but they play louder without distortion. Now, whether uh, these can beat the AI60s will really depend on whether you don't mind the compression on the AI 60s, because I did notice that there is some dynamic range compression. And so if that's something that would concern you, then you may want to look at the Mica RB42 with an amplifier such as the SMSL 8018. Um, but for now, I'm going to put them right under the AI 60s that come in. The AI 60s are 299. And so for 150 bucks, add an app that's, you know, under 150 bucks and, uh, you have a very good competition going on here. So that's it. So what do you guys think? If you've heard these before, let me know in the comments below whether you think I placed them in the right place. So again, these were sent to me free for review by Micah. Thank you to Micah once again. I'll leave a link to purchase these RB42s on Amazon. It's an affiliate link, so I get a small cut. So if you want to support, that's one way you can do it. If you just want to search on Amazon for it, then that's cool too. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions about these speakers, Leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to try to answer all of them. Anyway, that's it for now. 
If you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And if you want to check out some more exclusive content, I have a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Joe and Tell. Anyway, that's it. Take care. Bye bye. Oh, I almost forgot. There's a little Easter egg. And that is that if you take a look at the crossover here, you'll notice that one of the resistors is shorted out, meaning they're bypassing this entire resistor. Now, I talked to one of the reps at MICA, and what they told me was that that resistor is for the tweeter. So if you were to remove that solder and actually use the resistor, what you'll notice is that the treble is likely to decrease. I'm not sure. I haven't tried it for myself, but it's something that I think the DIY community and the budget audiophile community is going to take a look at. I'm curious to see what happens. And I think that's a cool little hack because if it's a way for you to be able to change your sound just by removing some solder, then that might be cool. Anyway, I figured that I should mention that briefly.